What's up? This your boy, Big Man. You know what this is, man. So we're going to continue our series where we're talking about this No Limit series. And we're going to finish this off with the fifth and final episode of the No Limit docuseries, man. And it's called No Limit Chronicles. And if you haven't been keeping up, I've already talked about episodes one and two and episodes three and four. So you guys can check those videos out as well. And man, in this episode, it was a lot to uncover, man. But before we get into this, do me a favor, man. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button and let's get it. All right. So then this episode starts off and we talking about the early 2000s. Now, after all that success in the late 90s, I mean, Master P is shuffling money everywhere, man. He is doing his thing. He's getting his entrepreneurship on. He tried out for the NBA. He's done a million things, man. And now it's time to focus things back home. So Master P at this point is a little bit older. You know what I'm saying? And he's just super duper successful. I mean, the level of success he reached, he's like one of the only rappers at that time to reach like that high on the entertainers for, for um, the Forbes list. Just a lot of good things going on. So he starts a rebranding, man. He starts a real good rebranding campaign because artists start leaving left and right. You got Mystical, who leaves, and Mystical goes on to be a way more successful artist outside of No Limit. Uh, let me think about that. Maybe that's not fair. Because when he was with No Limit, he was highly successful. He had two platinum albums, one of them going double platinum on No Limit. But when he went out on his own and dropped albums, when he got his deal again, I believe it was with Jive, he was just as successful. He was double platinum, double platinum. He was killing it. You know what I mean? He was shaking fast and all those albums. You know, he he, he blew up, man. It's just he wasn't under an, an, an umbrella with the type of guidance that P had. Now, one thing you do see in this episode five is even when these guys started going their own ways and started separating them, they were still kind of under his umbrella. Like he could still go to them. They could still come to him for advice and he could still go to them and tell them, hey, man, I wouldn't do that if I was you. You know what I'm saying? Nah, don't do that, man. Don't do that. And we'll talk about that in a couple of ways here shortly. Even with P's guidance, you see a lot of the key figures and big time artists on No Limit leave, man. So P has to do the rebranding. But before he kicks it off with a new team, he says, I'm about to drop another album. And he drops his last successful album ever, which is Ghetto Postage. And it is la it's his last album, they say, on the documentary to even go gold. Now, this was not one of them slappers like all the other stuff. It was a lot more commercial and you could tell where he was going because once he continued on with the 504 boys, it got real commercial. Now, in this transition, a lot of stuff took place. You got Kane and Abel. They catch a drug charge. You got Mac catches a murder charge. Then you got C. Murder catches a murder charge. Now, Mac's situation, we're going to delve into a little bit because they spent a little time on it. So Mac catches this murder charge. And he goes to perform at this small club. And you know, for rappers, that's the thing, man. That's how they get their big money, man. Because somebody who owns some club in whatever town is, is like, hey, man, here's 15, 20 grand just to come bless the stage for a couple of songs tonight. And, man, they do that all year round. That's why a lot of them are hurting right now during this COVID. But that's besides the point. But, man, that is a big thing for rappers, man. And Mac, he had a small club show. Master P told him not to do it because he doesn't believe in his artists doing small club shows because he knows the small club environment. I don't like going to small clubs when I was out there clubbing because you know what's going down in a small club, man. Small club, all it takes is one little bump. All it takes is one person to get their issue on. The next thing you know, that place erupts, man, and chairs is being thrown. They only got one, maybe two security guards, usually just one. So somebody easily gets stabbed or easily gets shot, man. It's just a bad situation, man. So maybe Master P foreseen what was about to happen, but man, Mac, something happens, there's a fight, and somebody ends up getting murdered. Now, the crazy part about this story is his bodyguard comes out a couple of days later and says, hey, man, tells the police, yo, man, y'all got Mac arrested for this murder. I did the murder. You know, it was a self-defense type deal. And then they told him, nah, be quiet. Now, eventually, Mac is out, is prosecuted. And then once he's prosecuted, he's sentenced to 30 years to life for manslaughter. I said, whoo, 
See, man, y'all don't know about these southern states, man. These southern states do not play, man. Once you get involved in that system, it's a continuous cycle. And, man, they throwing the book at you, man. You getting railroaded. Mia X even said that in the documentary verbatim. You getting railroaded, man. So the best thing to do is, man, probably stay at home or something. Now, in the backdrop of all that, though, the 504 boys have a couple of hits, man, that are club bangers. So they go out on tour, man. And they're blowing up. They're doing their thing. You know, P gets the money, and he's doing his thing. And he comes back off tour with the 504 boys. And next thing he knows, Lil Romeo is really developing into a rapper. So P says, man, I'm about to really change focus, really clean it up. We not going PG. We going G. We going straight Disney, Nickelodeon with this. And he starts to focus on being a CEO and working on the career of Romeo, which is one of his greatest moves, man. Anybody, man, in other cultures, it is always pushed, man, to build your own empire, leave it for your kids, right? It's just something we hardly get into and we're, it, we don't see often because, especially here in the States, we're more focused on being workers, man. It's how we're taught. We're taught to be workers, building your own thing and having your kids carry on that and stuff. It's just, it seems so out of touch and out of reach. But man, Master P did this brilliantly. And it is displayed in this joint a million times over. And the fact that he allowed other people to go out and be their own bosses. Like when they went to leave No Limit, he didn't do a Suge Knight and tell him, nah, you can't leave, we got paperwork. He said, all right, man, we're going to do a release so you can go out and do your own thing. Be a boss, come back to me and get some advice if you need some consulting. But I might charge you a fee for that. You know what I mean? That type of deal, man. He's just got a real boss mindset. And you see throughout this whole docuseries where it comes from and how it's displayed. And it's amazing, man. And I ain't riding jock. I'm just giving props where they're due. So in 2001, Master P's sweetheart deal, that 80-20 deal that made him so, so many millions, is coming to an end. Obviously, Priority does not want to redo that deal because they're thinking about all the money that they probably missed on. So, P goes over to Universal, which is crazy because that's where cash money is. They're over at Universal. And he does a press and distribution deal, I believe, with them. And they give him $10 million. He, they give him $10 million. So, dog, he's winning all over. So, he really, really tries to re rebrand. He calls it the new No Limit. He's riding out this Hot Boys thing. And Romeo is doing amazing. Dude is drop is is going three million, whatever. Got a Nickelodeon show. It's looking up and up. And then some crazy happens. Now C Murder went out on his own, even though he was distributed by Master P. He had his own label. And C Murder, based on the documentary and everything we know from his music, had a tendency to rely too much on the street life. Man, he played too close in the streets. He had one foot in the streets. And one foot in the rap game. I know that's come commonplace. And it's been kind of like that for a long time. But you see where the advantages were. We're just dealing with P. Where he could have cleaned it up. And would have been free. And it just didn't take that. It didn't take that course man. It's, it's crazy and it's sad. So C Murder first gets arrested. Because he was allegedly shooting at the front of a club. Because they denied him entrance. And then that happened in 2001. Next thing you know, June 2002, man, he's in Harvey, Louisiana at another club, walks in with an entourage. There's a kid on, on the stage rapping. I guess it's an open mic type contest. Now, rumor has it, and it's alleged that the kid saw a C-Murder from No Limit, and you know No Limit was kind of on a decline. And in those times when you're on decline and people might be, you know, you clean up your image, man, people might poke fun, especially in a rap battle and stuff like that. And it's alleged that the kid said something slick about No Limit or whatever and P and all that stuff. And nobody's ever proved that. But it said that's what kicked the fight off. And so it's some folks from C Murder's entourage allegedly jumping this kid. And the next thing you know, the kid gets shot. Now, this is the crazy part about it, man. The bodyguard who saw the whole incident tried to break the whole incident. See, this goes back to those small clubs. He's in Harvey, Louisiana in a small club. One bodyguard bouncer there tries to break the incident up. He says he grabbed C-Murder. So when the gunshots goes off, he knows C-Murder wasn't there. 
except for the one time that C. Murder slipped away from him and tried to run back in the fight. But he goes on the stand during the trial and says that C. Murder was the shooter. Now, on the documentary, he recants all those statements. He says that no, C. Murder was not the shooter, whatever. But this dude is shaky, man. He's shaky. I can't believe how shaky he is. And I was just like, every time, like, I've watched this like three or four times. And dude, even during the retrial, says that C. Murder was the shooter. So what in the world? And he signed the little thing to say that C. Murder is the person that he knows and put his name on it and stuff, which is odd anyway, whatever. But man, a lot of red flags in C. Murder's case. I'll just say that much. Now, what's going on with C. Murder? P. does something interesting, man. He focuses on becoming even more commercial. Because now we're coming into the Cribs generation. You got Romeo on Cribs. They're doing a lot more commercial stuff. They're really cleaning up the act. Because you can see his focus as an older dude. And that's with age comes wisdom. And he's basically just trying to clean everything up. And one of his ex-artists, Mystical, gets ar arrested and pleads guilty with two of his bodyguards for a crazy charge that he doesn't even want No Limit associated with. But since Mystical is an ex-No Limit artist, it just, man, it makes things crazy for him, man. They try to avoid it, but Mystical, he goes to jail, and things just ain't looking good for him from then on. You know what I mean? And then in 2003, Soldier Slim is gunned down. So you can see the more positive that P got, and the more commercial that P got, man, it seemed like the worst things got for his ex-artist and his artist. Now, Master P knows that C-Murder is fighting his trial, and I, I guess he's got an appeal or whatever. So he hires an independent investigator, and the independent investigator confirms from her research that C-Murder did not commit the crime, did not commit the shooting. But oddly enough, back to the, to the security guard. The security guard in that trial again says that C. Murder was the shooter. But then if you look on this documentary, he's saying, nah, man, he wasn't. So, I mean, if I was P, I'd be like, man, you got to say that where it counts in court. But, you know, you never know what the situation is with that. Now, this is another crazy thing. So, Louisiana used to have a rule that if it was a hung jury, a 10-2 to 2 jury, a hung jury, you could still send somebody to, to jail for life. Where... Nine times out of ten, or excuse me, in most states, if there's a hung jury, you can't be convicted for uh, for life or death. You know what I mean? Can't be sent to jail for life or convicted it to the death penalty. So it's crazy, man. And since then, they said on the documentary in 2018 that they got rid of that law. You know, now it's like other states where you have to have everybody has to agree they want to send you to jail for life. Everybody on the jury has to agree if they want to send you to the death penalty. So, crazy, man. But as time passes on, man, nothing that they do seems like it's going to work for C-Murder, even though they're still fighting that case to this day. But Master P comes a bigger philanthropist, and he starts re restoring old and poor neighborhoods around New Orleans, man. Big projects where he's committing millions of dollars, you know, and getting a lot of donors and stuff like that and just getting stuff taken care of. He's also hiring black contractors to do a lot of the work. So, man, this dude is doing his thing. Salute to P, man. I'm for real. On the business end, ain't no stopping him, man. And he's passing out food. They're really doing their thing, man, as far as trying to take care of the community that they grew up with and the folks that supported him on his way up. And that's what folks should always do, man. Dope. And he's becoming more of a family man, man. P takes a step back. Romeo and Symphony, they start becoming the artists because now we're getting into modern times. And he sees that, you know, he's, I mean, Master P at this point is 53, 54. So he sees that he has to pass it off to his kids. And he's been grooming Romeo for this opportunity his whole life, man. And you love to see that, man. Passing off the legacy, man. Amazing, man. A lot of people talk about that and preach about that. This cat did it, man. So he becomes more of a family man. And by July 2019, he's still rolling, though. He drops I Got the Hookup 2, which is the sequel to his hit movie. Then he's got a lot of other ventures that are that are dope, man. He's the one who's behind the rap snacks where you see rap artists on the cover like Bootsy, Biggie Smalls, and cats like that. And the rap noodles where you see the same thing. 
it's just so many different things that he's in. Man, it's crazy, man. Dude is a natural born entrepreneur, still getting that money, still becoming and making himself that $350 million man. And it's dope to see. Now, as recent as 2019, he had a no limit family national tour. Now, this is one of those nostalgia tours where they bring artists from the past to do their hits. And they've been a uh, trend lately and it's been sweeping the nation. And man, he brought out everybody. He had Snoop Dogg, he had Mia X, Mr. Servon, Crazy. He had every Silk the Shocker, everybody who was involved in the past, even Mystical. He had them all at this show and it was successful. And that's the note they ended off on. One man with a vision moves over to Richmond, California, says, I'm going to become a rapper. But I'm going to take the rap game by storm. They're not going to take advantage of me. I'm going to take and get everything I can out of the rap game and prove to be successful, man. Master P was the guy who inspired a lot of folks, man. He inspired even, admittedly, the Rockefeller cats. They got even more inspired when they seen what Master P was doing out there. They was like, what? This dude is getting what kind of money? Okay. Man, it let people know that, hey, you can really go get it. And it helped rejuvenate some careers and send some careers into a higher stratosphere. You had cats like Snoop. Doc Snoop could have been out there washed up. Master P brought him in, rejuvenated his career, sent him back out. Bigger artist than, as he was before. Doing dope. Still been doing big things since then. Movies, everything, man. Same with Mystical, except for his legal troubles. But musically, man, when he left No Limit, he was in a better place. Just an amazing contribution to hip hop and a dope documentary. One of the best I've seen this year. Now with that, that's been your boy, Big Man. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. And we out of here.